Great, so welcome today. We are continuing with uh, chapter two, the geometry primitives. And we're gonna look at a uh, cylinder node is next. But we have, we have some features to go over. First is uh, how does the drag and drop work? Now, uh, here I have our good old scene, uh, hello world. And on the right of the screen, we see there's a palette. I'm gonna adjust the palette a little bit. I'm gonna select big icons that might make it a little more uh, visible on the video screen. And we can see that we have a bunch of different selections here on the palette, uh, grouped by uh, the categories, the commonality between the nodes, and they just happen to match the different chapters that you're in on this palette. So uh, that should help you as you go along. It lets you focus on the nodes of interest and go back, grab the nodes that you also want. One of the uh, interesting features we have is whether we could, uh, some people might want to make a grand list of all the nodes, just alphabetized or something like that, or perhaps organized the way the X3D specification is organized. So uh, those are good ideas. And what we did was uh, record that on our bug list so we don't forget. When will it happen? I don't know. But uh, when it bubbles to the top of the list or we're, when somebody decides, hey, I would really like to add that, then that functionality is possible. But for now, we'll stick with the palette as structured and what's there. So we saw in an earlier talk that we can change geometry nodes if uh, we don't like the sphere and then we want a, uh, a more orderly earth and we could drag a box in here and, and when you drag it you click to select. I'm using uh, the left button on my mouse and then drag it to where I want in the scene graph. If you look closely, you can see the cursor moving where there's a selection point, but you can also see when it lands on a node, right now my cursor's on the shape node, you can see that the closing tag for the shape, the outside of that node's scope, is also highlighted in yellow. Now I've selected the appearance node, etc. Okay, so that's a helpful little navigation thing. And when I let go, instead of just dropping the node in place, it first pops up an editing panel for that node so that we can adjust the size. And uh, this time we'll make it a little wider in the X and Z directions and say, okay. Looking at the scene, we can see that the box did get dropped, 323, three. Uh, but as expected, our 3D view did not change because we haven't refreshed it yet. So let's do that. Okay, so there's our box in the tree view, there's our box in the 3D view. And we see a curious uh, difference when the texture got mapped, when that image got draped across the geometry, unlike the sphere where it went around the whole geometry, we had it uh, put one texture per side of the box. Let me make that a little bigger. Okay, now if you don't like that, sorry, you don't like that. Uh, the way this works, a uh, box is treated a little bit differently with textures than a sphere is. So this is the proper behavior for how an image gets applied. We'll learn in later chapters that if we wanted that whole world to wrap around the whole box, we'd have to define a texture transform, transformation coordinates, and also 
build the box a different way. We probably make an index face set to create all of that. But nevertheless, we can fiddle around here and make a few simple changes and have some fun with this thing. Let's drop the cone in. Get the warning, hey, are you sure you want to do that? It's not valid. And we go, oh, okay, I know what that is. I forgot to get rid of the box first. So I'll get rid of that. We'll hit the validation key to check and see, did it validate this time? And yes, it did, should be good. Now we'll draw it and okay. Uh, doesn't look like a cone, does it? Well, not sure what I did wrong here. There we go. Okay, so we can see that the cone draped it around. The sides but then replicated it all by itself on the bottom. Okay, so let's look some more at this cone guy. So to do that, we'll go to the slides and uh, so we're actually on slide uh, 15 now. And we can see what the uh, we can see what the different fields are. Not sure what's going on here. Okay, we'll just not worry about that right now. We have uh, three terms. Three separate terms. One is the bottom radius, another is the height, and I misspoke. We have four terms. Side and bottom uh, are booleans, true or false, for whether you draw the side, draw the bottom, or draw the bottom. So if we want, if we set them to false, then we're hiding different parts. Oh, did we just find a good way to make a flat circle? I think so. If you set the side false and it's not drawing the side, then you would get the full bottom. But you'd still need a, uh, a non-zero height, maybe a very small value, to put that bottom, uh, to make it a legal cone. It would just have an invisible top to it. Similarly, if you're trying to make a megaphone or something like that, uh, you could use a cone and take off the bottom. All right. So here's our example, cleverly named Cone X3D. Let's find that. And uh, yesterday we saw that a good way to find that was simply uh, opening up the file menu and looking for it. But today I'm going to show you uh, yet another feature. Let's go up to Window on the file on the topmost menu, Window, and we're looking for favorites, the favorites key. So this is going to open up the favorites window. All right, so we see that up at the top now, we see that I've added a few directories as favorites. And so what we're going to do is right click in that favorite window. I'll open it up a little more so you can see it better. Uh, I'm going to right click in here and it offers us add to favorites. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is navigate externally to the uh, book examples directory. Uh, you can also use the directory chooser in there, but I, I've got some bookmarks saved already, so rather than trawl around, I'm just going to copy that directory of interest, paste it in here, type add, and sure enough, there's a there it is, added to the favorites window. So the next time we come back, we'll find that guy and we'll be able to uh, quickly access it. So let's go to 
course, chapter two, geometry primitives. Open it up, and now we want the cone, cone.x3d. So I'll double click on that, or you could select open. But you can also select view on there, so that's a nice little file menu. Okay, so where is it? There we go. So cone.x3d. Uh, here's another little piece of knobology here, a little button. You click on that and it'll open up your editing window to mostly the full screen. So let's, let's pause for a second and talk about knobology, buttons, features, and so forth. Uh, there's, there's an interesting mix of uh, emotions or reactions you might have to that kind of stuff. One is, uh, oh my God, there's so much picayune detail here to figure out. How do I do things? Does anybody have that reaction? <coughs> Another one is, oh yeah, that's pretty much what I expected. That's pretty much how other tools would work. Where, where would I find this? Uh, okay, there it is. Uh, a third reaction is, all right, there's the feature I was looking for. Just like that. Uh, there's probably something, uh, if anybody wants to write a paper, maybe there's a paper on the, you know, the seven phases of denial and loss and et cetera, uh, user interface uh, learning. But uh, I'd like to point out a different example when, uh, and this one's from music, when uh, I happen to like uh, jazz music. One of the things about jazz is that, uh, besides very, being very diverse, a lot of musicians, it sounds like they're playing free jazz or playing something that's almost random, where you go, ah, oh, anybody could play that. It's sort of like modern art uh, paintings, you know. Oh, my dog could have painted that. And, and actually, there are some good dogs, but I think they're in a, a separate dog painting category. Anyway, if you, if, if you look hard at artists, if you like some arts where where uh, uh, the creativity is, is uh, uh, got a high premium on sp spontaneity, innovation, uh, unexpected changes. You, you might naively think that people go there and just sort of do what they do and some of them end up being kind of good at it. And in fact, that's not the case. In, in, in most of the arts, when somebody becomes adept enough, to, excuse me, when they become extremely creative, they don't just land there. They first have to work their way up through the basics, the fundamentals, to learn their craft, to learn their tools, the tools of the trade, the instruments that they need to master to get the basics down before you innovate. So I pose this example, maybe it's an unexpected one, but it's an encouragement to you to it's good to know your tool, whatever your tool is, because the more you learn the tool and master those basics, the sooner you get past that and you're like, oh, okay, I'm not fighting with my tool anymore, figuring out what the heck to do, but I'm using it to express the thoughts that I'm trying to create. Okay, I think uh, if each of you think of your own backgrounds and uh, particularly training and uh, teaching others how to be uh, good watchstanders or, or good professionals, you realize that yes, you really do need the fundamentals before you can innovate, before you can just do what you're thinking. Okay, so I will show you uh, these little tricks and tips as we go along, not, not to try to make you uh, memorize all these little things, but just to show you, oh, here's yet another way, and here's another way, and as you internalize this stuff, I think you'll find your own work goes that much faster. Okay, so cone, where is the cone? Okay, there it is, there's our cone, and let's restore the, the regular display, and 
we don't need the favorites so much anymore, so I'll shrink that guy down. And would like to see that it draws properly. Here's our cone. And here's our tree for how this looks. So let's open that up and make sure that that confirms our understanding. Yep, sure enough, we've got a scene as the root, we've got a shape node, a cone, an appearance, and a material. And it's very subtle on the video screen, but uh, whenever I highlight one of these over here in the navigator, we also see it highlighting in a light blue in the editor pane. Okay, so many ways to look at the same thing. That's good. If we go to the right on the uh, navigator pane, we can see it also lists on this tree what are the fields, what are the parameters of this guy, at least part of it. And if I put my mouse over it, it'll pop up. Sure enough, bottom equals true, height equals one, side equals true, bottom radius equals one. Okay, which is what we had over here. Yet another way to look at it. We select Edit Element under Cursor from the right-click Context menu. And here it is. Here's our pop-up panel that lets us inspect these things directly. We don't bother with true and false in here. We just give you a checkbox, a little cleaner, a little simpler. And we also have a shortcut to the help system to help you pull up Okay, there it is, cone. And we can learn that, for example, the height is for size in meters. Oh, okay, there you go. Some of them are just that easy. Okay, so cone is pretty straightforward. Let's get our uh, palette back. When I resize the screen, notice the palette jumped to this side. So we'll put that uh, pesky thing back where we want it. Or not. <laughs> My screen is not too responsive right now. Did this uh, happen to anybody else in the class? My screen just stopped. Here are finally, I'm wondering, uh, uh, I think I know what it is. I think uh, sometimes when we're recording, Jeff, there must be some kind of big file saving going on or something like that because it seems like every once in a while my computer is gulping for air here. So let's see if we can get it to respond again. Doesn't look so good. Okay, so Jeff, uh, please mark it that there's going to be a minute or two to cut here. I'm just going to kill this guy and restart. By the way, how big are these uh, video files typically, Jeff, that we're creating? Which one? Uh, just on average for each of these classes. Um, this is about 15 gigabytes. So those are uh -huh. And I think yours is around 5 or 6. Okay. So non-trivial file sizes that we're dealing with. Okay. So we're going to restore some windows here. I'll go back to the window menu, find Palette, and see if we can't get this guy back up.
I'm not quite sure what's going on here. See, it's popping up in there, and that's incorrect. Okay, we'll try one more time. Perhaps I started interacting with it too soon. Okay, sorry guys, I want to uh, reboot here. So Jeff, uh, I'm gonna shut this down right here with a stop. Yeah. Here. So I've, uh, we're back then, we have our cone scene. It looks like we've exercised the cone node pretty well. Uh, we could do a quick test of uh, bottom true or bottom false. I'll type that in, bottom false, and we'll refresh our view. The viewpoint resets, the cone is there, but if we look underneath, look at that, it just disappeared. Um, let's open this up a little bit. Alt-Shift-D to undock. Reset the viewer. I flip up and look under the skirt here, oh, it's just invisible. I'm still rotating and there it rotated all the way around. And so we see two things here. We see that not only is there no bottom, but there's no inside. Correct? See that? It's just like you're seeing through the far side of the cone and it's not until I complete rotating it here all the way around that it becomes visible. To confirm that we'll go into wireframe mode, shift it around and look at that it just disappeared. Still rotating then it comes back again. Okay so Alt Shift W for wireframe, Alt Shift D to redock and I'll undo that change and I think we had a good illustration there of why is it two-sided. Uh, who remembers what our field was for showing both sides? Solid. The solid field. And this one's counter counterintuitive. It's always the opposite of what you want. So solid true, solid checked off means it's only solid like a brick and we can't see inside it. Let's experiment with the solid field. Turn it off here. Okay. Still valid. We see that it now says solid false here. It also took away our other default values. It said, oh, those are defaults, so I'm not going to bother printing them out anymore. We'll refresh our view and still not seeing inside it. So there you go. We could say that this feature maybe doesn't work in this browser if we want to view it. If you've installed it in another browser as a plugin, you could compare it and see how it works. So I just launched it into my web browser. We're now looking at it in the contact browser. Rotate this around. You can see, okay, well, the bottom's still there. Let's make the bottom hide. How do we do that? Look at that. It's prompting us there. Bottom equals, what should I put in? False. false. Correct. It's true or false. In fact, look at that. The editor is prompting me for the right value here as well. Isn't that handy? Okay, so I'll view that externally once again. And 
shift this guy back into examine mode. And boy, it looks like I'm having one of those days here. Well, the company advertising still works, but nothing else does. That's uh, have to report that to the marketing department. Here we are, finally back. Prevented from opening a pop-up window. Okay, one more time. Okay, so not looking very good. Oh, I think I see why that is. It's because I didn't save the file. So if you're going externally, it won't show what's in your edited window. It will show what's saved because it's loading the file. So I hit save, hit reload. Turn it around. Okay, here we go. Getting closer now. We have the bottom missing, and we can see the insides because we set solid equals false. So let's go back to solid equals true, save it, hit reload. And now when I rotate it around, once again, it's invisible. So we can say, hey, we're looking at one-sided polygons. Right there, peeking through the bottom. What do you see when you look the wrong side of a one-sided polygon? Nothing. It just goes straight through to what's behind, in this case, the background color. Okay, now if we were taking pictures for a, a figure, some browsers give you uh, extra little helps uh, like saving a screenshot or uh, I'm not sure this browser does it but some browsers let you change the background color <laughs> as a convenience method. We can do that inside our 3D scene but sometimes they'll let you do that. So it depends on the tool. Looks like we don't have that control in here. Maybe under preferences let's check. Why are we checking? Because it pays to know your tool, right? It pays to be adept. Render options. No, I'm not seeing it here. Okay, so there's our cone example. We've exercised that pretty well. There are our tool tips as a convenient reference. And I think that covers us on cone. Let's go ahead to cylinder. This should start looking pretty familiar now. Variations on a theme. We have almost the same parameters. This time we have height, side, and bottom, but we also have top, a Boolean for whether or not to draw the top of this thing, and we have uh, radius instead of bottom radius. It's a consistent radius for top and bottom. So we've named it differently. Going to the screen snapshots here, we can see yep, another very similar example. Here we are looking into the cone where we've turned the top off. Gee, without reading the, the actual setting on the node, but just by looking at this picture at the bottom, What would we say the parameters are? With no top, oops. With no top, then obviously top is uh, false, but we're seeing the inside. So do we have a default setting right here? Answer no. It's not the default, because usually we don't see the insides of things, so we don't bother drawing them. So to see the inside, we must have changed 
the solid field. And sure enough, when we look up here, we see that solid equals false. Solid equal false being our safety net to always see all parts of the geometry if they exist and draw both sides. Okay, let's check out X3D edit. And it should be a lot easier to get this scene this time because we saved it in the in the favorites. So I can go back to the favorites, find the cylinder node. Just by clicking at it, we can look at it here. That's handy. So that you can also use this as a little quick uh, catalog postage stamp browser, I guess, by stepping through the different worlds. We can uh, decide if we want to open it. Yeah, we'll open that. And sure enough, there are the settings that are in the book example, in the slide set example, and a very predictable editing field for a cylinder. Slide 17 shows the tooltips. And uh, this morning I actually thought of a new feature. I'll probably add it tonight uh, for the tooltips. We saw yesterday the tooltips were a little clumsy on here. It can be slow on uh, some machines right now. If I go back to editing, cylinder and click help. That's the quickest way to get our way into the tooltips and bring us there. It takes a little, little time to load. Insert funny joke here. <laughs> what I'm going to do is uh, on the index page for tooltips Instead of having the top level tooltip index go to uh, the English version, I'll instead put a second, secondary selection that you can use to launch it right in your web browser. And that'll make this maybe a little easier to uh, manipulate. Okay, so I think we are up to text the text node, we did get through all of the material. Oh, no, I'm mistaken. One more. I can't forget Sphere. Sphere, once again, very, you know, uh, variations on the theme. Complicated figure. Simple definition. All we have is radius. And all these angles, frankly, are not very useful. We don't expose them in X3D. They're just illustrative in the figure here. If we get into advanced geometry, we'll use some of those definitions, but we don't have to worry about any of that. Our sphere node is incredibly simple. Just radius of one is the default, and solid true, meaning no insides. If you wanted to use the sphere not as a ball, but as a dome to be inside it, once again, we'd flip the solid field, and you get that. Are you able to kill half of it? Can you do that? Uh, actually, no. We do not have, uh, the question is, could we kill half of the sphere and just use the top half and get rid of the bottom? No, we don't expose that within a sphere. Uh, so if you're using the sphere node by itself, what you see is what you get. However, if you want to create a half dome, you certainly can. And we'll get that in a later chapter on geometry. Uh, index face set. In fact, we have some examples that define an index, uh, define a, a hemisphere, which are easy to use. Okay, so this is a good break point, and on the next lesson we'll pick up with the text note.